The rest, monsieur, it merely remains for you to give me your orders. I await them aboard my ship, and anything else of a personal nature that you may feel I have provoked by the terms I have felt compelled to use in this council. Monsieur le Baron, I have the honor to wish you good day. He stalked out, and his three captains, although they thought him mad, rolled after him in loyal silence. Monsieur de Rivarol was gasping like a landed fish. The stark truth had robbed him of speech. When he recovered, it was to thank heaven vigorously that the council was relieved by Captain Blood's own act of that gentleman's further participation in its deliberations. Inwardly, Monsieur de Rivarol burned with shame and rage. The mask had been plucked from him, and he had been held up to scorn. He, the general of the king's armies by sea and land in America. Nevertheless, it was to Cartagena that they sailed in the middle of March. Volunteers and Negroes had brought up the forces directly under Monsieur de Rivarol to twelve hundred men. With these, he thought he could keep the buccaneer contingent in order and submissive. They made up an imposing fleet, led by Monsieur de Rivarol's flagship, the Victorieuse, a mighty vessel with eighty guns. Each of the four other French ships was at least as powerful as Blood's Arabella, which was of forty guns. Followed the lesser buccaneer vessels, the Elizabeth, La Chassie, and Atropos and a dozen frigates laden with stores, besides canoes and small craft in tow. Narrowly, they missed the Jamaica fleet with Colonel Bishop, which sailed north for Tortuga two days after the Baron de Rivarol's southward passage. End of chapter 26 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by